These tyres cost $15.99 each and they are physically impossible to puncture. They also come with an obscure warning. A warning which I've never seen on a tyre before. So I'm going to find out if solid, puncture-proof tyres are a total waste of time or they're not as bad as some people think. Last year, I had the brilliant idea of trying to make solid puncture-proof tyres, and that turned out to be quite the failure. My arm is shaking, not only because I'm incredibly weak, but I'm actually slightly nervous. But I'm back for more with genuine, real-life puncture-proof tyres. Will these be the next big thing, or will they turn out to be total crap? Well, that is exactly what I'm going to try and find out by fitting solid tyres to my bike and heading out for a ride. But before I do that, I think I should explain that the tyres fitted onto your bike and the pressure you run them at are one of the most effective ways to upgrade your bike, be that for comfort, control and speed. But what if you want to put puncture protection at the top of those list of priorities? Well, you've got a few options. You could head out and buy tyres with an added layer of puncture protection, of which there are many to choose from. You could choose to use a tubeless tyre setup with a sealant inside the tyre designed to seal punctures up before you even notice them. But what if that's still not enough and you want more than that? Well, that is where solid tyres enter the chat. I got these bad boys on eBay and they are way cheaper than most normal road bike tyres. So when I put my bike, we'll go for a ride and see what they're actually like. The main thing that I want to try and find out is whether using potentially slower tyres but having zero risk of punctures is overall a better and faster option than using my normal tyres but then accounting for the time that it would take to fix a flat. So to do that, let's actually get these things on a set of wheels. Like how hard could this be? Yeah, people probably think I'm trying to make this look difficult. <laughs> it's gonna ping off any second now. We're on. Well, that was a challenge, wasn't it? That, I've gotta say, is up there with some of the toughest tubeless tires that I have gone to battle with. So first up, let me give you some quick fire stats. Weight of these bad boys, 460 grams each, which is about twice that of your standard road bike tire, which makes them heavy AF. They're designed to fit on an internal rim width of between 12 and 16 millimeters, which by modern standards is super narrow. Hence why I've had to dust off the rim brake F12. Now the tires that I've got here are 23 millimeters wide and they come in a selection of beautiful colors, of which I've chosen green. First impressions of solid tyres in terms of comfort and that feeling of speed that you have, well it's quite apparent that there is really zero give or compliance in the tyre whatsoever. I mean I'm not sure what else I could possibly have been expecting or anticipating, but I do want to stress it's more exaggerated than I would have ever imagined. But what about solid tyres in terms of grip? Well, it's not looking fantastic here either because it's the rubber compound and the air pressure inside your tyres which has the greatest impact on the grip that you get from them. And these solid tyres feel more like a plastic than a rubber and purely by definition of the name solid, you've lost the ability to fine tune the air pressure inside the tyre to control the grip levels that you get. And well, on the plus side, they come in lots of different colours, which I actually think is cool as hell. Granted, green, red, black and pink, it's kind of like a clash on my bike, but you get the gist. But what about that warning that I mentioned earlier on, I hear you ask? Well, the listing for these tyres, quite literally in bold font at the bottom, said, Warning! If you need to ride too fast daily, not recommend these solid tyres, which even after the handful of kilometres I've ridden so far, I say I'm inclined to agree with, which also means people who are focused on racing or pure performance are unlikely to be rushing out to the shops to invest their money in solid tyres. But where I feel this type of technology could lend itself to is urban and commuting bikes where reliability and ease of maintenance 
comes at the top of the priority list. So, to put this to the test, I've devised a 12 kilometer gruelling test loop. I'm just kidding, it's just your typical fairly flat roads. But, by riding the circuit, I'm gonna be able to see the difference in speed, time, and get a feeling for what solid tires are actually like to use between my normal premium tires and inner tubes. But at the end, I can add the time onto my normal tire setup of how long it takes me to fix an inner tube puncture. And that way we can see if the trade-off of slow but puncture proof tires is actually really worth it. So we know difference in setups between the two things other than the tires. Right, it's enough jibber jabber from me. Let's get to the test. Three, two, one. Oh, it's clear, lovely. Oh. Go. Right, over to me to discuss the results. Scores on the doors, what have we got? So, solid tyres first. We had a time on my 12 kilometre test loop of 31 minutes, 31 seconds. Average speed of 23.3 kilometres an hour and an average power of 225 watts. I then went home, back to GCN mini base, switched out the tyres for some premium tyres and premium inner tubes. We're back out on the course, same position, same everything, only difference being the tyres. And then we've got a time of 22 minutes and eight seconds. Average power, 227 watts, so ever so slightly higher, which means we've got an average speed of 33.3 kilometres an hour, which means premium tyres and premium inner tubes are significantly faster than solid tyres. And if you take the solid tyres time and the premium tyres time, it means solid tyres are nine minutes, 23 seconds slower and cost you on average 10 kilometres an hour to your average speed. Now, if you tend to ride at speeds which are slower than the speeds that I did in my test, you can expect that difference and margin in time to be reduced ever so slightly. If you ride at average speeds which are higher than what I did, you can expect that margin to grow even bigger. But it means on average, fitting solid tires to your bike is gonna cost you around 30% of your average speed. But as I said at the start of this video, that deficit in speed might be worth it if you really don't want the hassle of having a puncture, or when you add the time it takes to repair and change an inner tube or fix a puncture, it's still less than what it takes overall on your solid tires. So on that basis, providing you can change an inner tube in less than nine minutes, and 23 seconds, pneumatic tires still make the sensible choice and will be faster and slightly more efficient. But the reality of it is you're not gonna puncture on every single bike ride. So 99 times out of 100, the pneumatic tire is gonna be the smarter, the faster and more efficient option than using a solid tires. And hence why solid tires haven't become mainstream yet. So solid tires, Great for certain applications and people who really just don't want to puncture. But for the rest of us, pneumatic tyres still come out up on top. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments section down below if you've ever actually used solid tyres yourself or if having seen this video, you've decided, you know what? I just don't ever want to have a puncture. Solid tyres are for me. Right, I'm out of here to take those solid tyres off my bike. I don't think they're for me. See you later.